What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. I've been going through my baits a little bit here this morning and in particular my rubber baits and I decided I should probably make a quick video for you guys covering kind of two maybe sleeper tips on how to repair rubber baits as well as how to kind of bring that original shine back to them. So without any further ado, let's jump right into this one. first topic that I want to cover for you guys today is how I go about repairing rubber baits and this really depends on kind of the nature of the cut in the bait but anybody who fishes rubber knows that when a bait's been chewed it tends to leave scars in the bait and I generally like to fix those within the same day if not um, immediately after the after I've been bitten but it, the, the nature of how I go about actually repairing rubber baits depends on the nature of the cut. So I have here a Medusa, if I can get this to focus for you guys. And this Medusa was chewed last year, probably see that. Um, this is a shallow Medusa, I pulled the hooks off, I'll actually talk about what I'm going to do here with the hooks in just a second, but um, there's a couple different types of cuts in this bait, and the first one is this cut right here on the side. This cut is what I would consider a deep laceration um, and the nature of it and the location of this cut allows me to actually fix this with a butter knife. So we'll jump into that first and then I'll go over how I go about fixing some of these smaller cuts in the side of the bait. You can see right there. So let's start with the butter knife technique first. So to execute the butter knife technique um, you're going to need two things to do this and the first one is a butter knife that you've promptly stolen from your wife's silverware drawer and I like to use a little bottle torch, a little propane bottle torch here and what we're actually going to do is um, heat this knife up with the bottle torch and when we get the knife really hot what we're going to do is actually run it through both sides of that laceration and then hold the, the rubber together and l allow it to cool and it will actually mend that rubber bait. So I'm just going to light this here quick. And we're going to get this really hot, as hot as we possibly can. Okay, so now that this knife is basically glowing red hot. What I'm going to do, if this camera will focus, is I'm just going to run it down the rubber on both sides. And I'm gonna hold those together. And we're gonna allow this to cool for just a second. And I hope that's focusing enough for you guys here so you'll actually be able to see how I do this. And as you can see, that laceration is now mended. It's not the prettiest work I've ever done, but you can kind of come in with the knife while it's still hot and smooth out any rough edges. Kind of melt all of that rubber back together. I should probably also mention that you're going to want to do this in a ventilated area. I actually have my garage door open right now on my shop. Um, but that's how I like to, to mend big lacerations. You can also do that, for example, on a bulldog where you've had the tail bitten off. Um, you can do a similar technique where you'll actually cut this tail and I'll try and do a video of that this summer. You cut this tail with the scissors and you run that butter knife right down both sides of the rubber on the bait and the new tail and you just hold it together and mend that bait back together. So that's what I like to do for deeper lacerations is the butter knife technique. Um, let's jump into the second technique which is more of a patch job technique but I think it's one that can allow you to make quick fixes on the water and may actually make your life a little bit easier when it comes to mending and repairing your rubber baits. Okay so the next technique I like to do for mending rubber is and this will work really well with the side laceration here that will focus for me. There we go, side laceration is at just about any automotive store you can buy a um, finger torch and I like to keep a couple of these in a Ziploc bag in the boat 
And what this allows you to do is really quickly light a tiny little pinpoint flame. And where that flame gets really beneficial is what I like to do, if this will actually focus for me here, I might actually step outside of the frame here. You can see that there. What I like to do is actually shoot the flame into the opening and then push it back together like so. And hopefully you guys will be able to see that. And it doesn't, it's not the prettiest job, but it'll mend that rubber back together and kind of make your, your bait whole. There's some folks that like to run their baits really chewed up. Um, depending on the nature of the bait, I will usually leave it until the springtime to actually mend some of these baits, like I'm doing with this Medusa here that was chewed last year. Um, but on, on thinner rubber baits, like a Red October Tube as an example, I like to mend those as the bites happen just to try and prolong the life of that bait. So um, this is actually looking pretty good here. Actually gonna hit one more spot. I'll touch it up in one more little spot here. And then I'm just squeezing that rubber back together, you can see. And uh, allowing it to, to basically cure itself back together. Um, so now, if I give this just a second here to heal up, I'm gonna patch a couple more spots while I'm talking to you guys. If I give that just a second here to heal up, I'll actually go and attempt to spread that with my fingers, and you'll see that it's mostly patched. I certainly think there's something to have having a roughed up rubber bait um, some of my best bulldogs have been chewed multiple times. Um, I don't fish medusas maybe as much as I should, but you definitely want a little bit of lacerations to give that bait more of an erratic action in the water. And um, It's nice to have scars on your bait, you know, it's a proven producer. So if I go back to this, step outside the frame here again, there go. try to spread that. That is now fully mended. So this little finger torch here, can allow you to make quick repairs on the water or with some of those side lacerations that are just tough to get into with the knife without really damaging the bait. It can um, it can allow for a pretty quick and, and actually really nice repair on some of these rubber baits. So hopefully that was useful. Let's actually jump into making an old rubber bait look relatively new again. The next topic that I wanted to cover with you guys is how I go about making old rubber baits look new. Um, after a season of wear, riding in the boat, things of that nature, they get a little dull and dingy looking and you kind of lose that shine that you want um, down in the water to have light reflect off of it and draw attention to that bait in the water. So this here is a brand new Magnum Bulldog. You guys can see that. Go. And see how it shines in the light. It's a really good shimmer to it. You want that, especially in, in darker stained water, you want that light to reflect off that bait and, and to allow it to shine really well. Um, what I have here is actually an older dog. This has been eaten a few times. Um, and this thing is kind of dull and dingy. It looks nice right now because the, the light from the camera is actually shining on it, but um, this shallow mag dog has been chewed, used and abused, ridden in the boat all those things. Um, we're gonna bring the outside surface of this back to life for you guys right now. What you're going to need for this is, is a relatively inexpensive tool and a lot of you probably already have this if you're somewhat handy around cars, electrical work, things of that nature. Um, is a heat gun. This is, I don't know, I think I got this one off of Amazon because it's just easier to have things shipped to your house. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this bulldog and I'm going to grab it by both hooks, like this, so you can see that. There we go. And I'm just gonna turn this heat gun on, and I'm gonna hit the outside of this thing. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to, to melt all of the outside rubber coating, and it's going to reseal itself. Um, so let's hit this thing real quick. Okay, 
So, let's see if it'll focus on this dog here. There we go. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it's definitely shinier. We're gonna give this just a minute to cool and I'll, I'll show you kind of the finished product up right here. Well, let's take a look at this dog, if this camera will focus for me. I don't know how well that's gonna come through for you guys, but this thing is noticeably shinier than it was. And I've been using that trick the last couple seasons to kind of bring old rubber baits back to life. Everybody knows rubber is a super effective tool for, for muskies and big pike, but it gets destroyed really, really easily. Um, so trying to prolong the life of these these baits is, is really important um, when you're kind of fishing on a budget, if you will. So I've been doing that basically every spring. We'll actually go through every single bait, fix every single wound in the bait, whether I use the butter knife or the finger torch, and then I'll go back over the top and hit it with that heat gun to try and bring that original shine back to the bait. So hopefully that's a helpful tip for you guys. Um, last but not least here, I'm going to show you the hook upgrade I do on my Medusas because I promised that earlier in the video and I don't wanna leave you guys hanging there. So let's jump right into that real quick. So the last little tip here for this video and then I'll let you guys go is everybody knows the Medusa. This is the one I just fixed. The Medusa is a super, super effective bait for chasing muskies and big pike and, and getting them to strike. But what often happens with rubber is fish don't always get hooks. They'll bite the bait and it takes a ton of force. You need a really stiff rod to set the hook on those fish and pull the bait through their teeth in order to drive hooks. Well. One of the things I noticed with Medusas, and let me grab these hooks here for you, is I I don't, I'm not a fan of the stock hooks on a Medusa. If you look at this hook, let me do this real quick. These are incredibly thick and heavy duty hooks. And it's great to have heavy duty equipment in, a, in musky fishing, but in my opinion, the diameter on these hooks is just too big. A muskie's mouth is very, very hard, and particularly with rubber baits, you need to drive those hooks home. So what I like to do is actually upgrade the hooks on my Medusas to Mustad. I'll focus for you. These are Mustad 3551 long shank treble hooks, um, and these are the seven aught sides. I like to use seven aughts on. Um, regular size medusas and I like to use a dots on husky medusas um, and as you can see here and I'll pull the other one up here in just a second as well but these hooks are much thinner in diameter and they have a longer shank to them um, which separates the hook away from the body more so as the musky bites it at least this is my theory anyway they're more likely to to get hooks um, because that hook is, is further away from the body of the bait when you go to set those hooks. So if you actually compare the two of these side by side here, you can kind of see the difference in thickness and the difference in, in maybe length here. I'm looking at these two. So one is much shorter, the stock hook is much shorter, and I've had a lot more success in hooking muskies with the longer tank hooks on my Medusa. So I'm actually gonna throw this on here while I got you guys here. So you can kind of see the, how far off the body these things set and get an idea for why I like to do this. see so you can see just how far off the bait the hook hangs now whereas the other one would have been noticeably shorter in relation to the bait um, that's just kind of how I like to run my medusas I've, I've had a lot better hookup success running them that way and hopefully that tip is helpful for you guys and will help you better utilize your rubber put more fish in the bag. 
that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.